rush hour in the border town of Puen Sholing in southern Bhutan and one of the main crossing points with India. Every day thousands of people pass through here into the Himalayan kingdom. Some enter for a better job with higher pay, some hoping for a better future. Most are Indian or Nepalese. For decades, Bhutan has relied on cheap foreign labour, mainly from countries like India and Nepal. Some have been living here in communities like this one for more than 50 years, but many have been denied the right to vote and citizenship in the land they call their home. Bombahadur Pradam is 86 years of age. He says he was born in Bhutan, and so were his six children and 12 grandchildren. But none of them are enjoying the spirit of democracy the country is now embracing. Fifteen years ago, the old man and his family, who are Hindus, were suddenly stripped of their Bhutanese citizenship. I'm disappointed and saddened. We've settled here, but then had a citizenship council. Where can we go? Losing their citizenship meant losing health and education benefits, as well as the chance to work in government jobs. There are many difficulties. We cannot get into schools. We cannot get into government services, we cannot go out of the country, the only option is to stay at home. Eighteen years ago, Bhutan introduced a system of categories for citizenship which excluded many Nepalese and Indians who were expelled from the country. Many claimed that their property was confiscated, but the authorities maintained they were illegal immigrants. That's why Bhutan's very firm, very strong uh, immigration and citizenship laws you know, so that people just can't walk in and get uh, citizenship. It's uh, basically survival, you know, the in survival instinct. This ethnic Nepalese man lives across the border in India. He's scared to be identified. He says he fled Bhutan, the place of his birth, in 1987 to avoid arrest for protesting against alleged discrimination. He and his wife were part of more than 100,000 Nepalese who had to leave Bhutan. Most are now living in refugee camps in Nepal and India and are slowly giving up hope of being allowed to return home. If the government of Bhutan eagers to take me back home, so I'll definitely go. There is a partial solution of sorts. The United States has agreed to take in 60,000 of the refugees though some organizations believe this isn't the right course to take. A lot of observers, civil rights groups, human rights groups are against the idea of resettlement because they feel that it puts a seal of approval on what Bhutan did in causing the refugees to flee in the first place. Militant Nepalese groups are thought to have been responsible for a number of bomb attacks throughout Bhutan in retaliation for the treatment of Nepalese. So far these have been small with no loss of life, but that could easily change and it remains the most pressing problem for the government of the world's newest democracy. Tony Bertley, Al Jazeera, Puen Sholing, Bhutan.